There have been so many attempts to deface the statue of Paul Kruger here in Pretoria that it's now been fenced off. Ironically, Kruger fought against one system of oppression, British colonialism, only to usher in another, a white racist government. Now, across the continent, Africa has been pulling down statues for years, but experts say it's not enough to address historical wrongs. Students at South Africa's University of Cape Town cheered when the statue of Cecil John Rhodes met its ignominious end five years ago. They had long been demanding its removal, insisting it was offensive to glorify a racist coloniser. It was a cathartic moment, believes constitutional lawyer Luando Klaso. And I think um, statues represent so many ideas that are wrapped up in, in, in the physical object itself. And that by toppling them, you are saying that those ideas that they represent no longer have a place in society. South Africa is not the only African country that sought to wipe out its shameful past by removing hated symbols of it. A different statue of Rhodes was toppled in Zimbabwe in 1980 after that country became independent. In Kenya, a statue of Britain's Queen Victoria was knocked down and left headless five years ago. But for many, this does not go far enough. I'm a proponent for taking down statues if it leads to some kind of material change, if the conditions of people's lives, socioeconomic rights are fulfilled. Otherwise, to me, it's meaningless. The, uh, the Historian and philosopher in, Professor in, in, Ashil Mbembe agrees. We haven't in Africa uh, thought seriously about uh, the ways in which we want to reconstruct our public sphere in the aftermath of uh, uh, colonial oppression. We have hardly started that discussion. In Cape Town, the dismantling of the Rhodes statue morphed into a far bigger campaign known as the Fees Must Fall movement, which sparked nationwide protests. <laughs> Students wanted free tertiary education and demanded the curriculum be decolonized. The debate over statues is always a debate about more than statues the transformation of the curriculum so that it reflects who we are, where we come from, what we are struggling with and where we want to go. Re-examining historical injustice can result in its symbols being replaced with something new. It's an opportunity to reimagine what kind of values a society upholds. So I think for me, if I took the Cecil John Road statue, I'd want to melt some parts of it, create an interesting feature out of it, reforming parts of it into something that tells a, a, a bigger story than just of Cecil John Rhodes, but maybe tells the story of what Rhodes represents. We need to decolonize our minds, says Mbembe, and ask how we can both overcome systemic racism and share the world in a way that makes it more sustainable for all. Together neatly in the context of uh, the murder of uh, uh, George Floyd and the coronavirus, which attack our respiratory system. I have here in mind uh, the last words of uh, many of those victims, I can't breathe. So how do we make a world where uh, we all have a universal right to breathe is, is the key issue that is at stake in the current debate on on statues. Paul Kruger's statue may well be taken down in the future, but the wounds of racism run deep, which is why so many in this country are saying it's not enough to simply topple statues. This must be accompanied by socioeconomic justice. Deborah Patter, CBS News, Pretoria, South Africa.